years, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires. will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Christians tend to have a struggle, it seems, with truth and myth. Let me tell you a couple of myths that Christians tend to wander off to on a fairly regular basis. I can do this by myself. If I do good here and now and do a lot of good, I will earn my way to heaven. I have earned all of this. I will give to God what's left over. The church doesn't really need anyone. My favorite one, priests only work on Sundays. <laughs> Let me dispel that myth right now. What we have here in this letter to a wayward pastor who seems to be struggling, Timothy, from Paul. We don't know that it is actually St. Paul. In fact, scholars debate that this is actually really St. Paul writing this to Timothy. What we do know is that there are two letters that are written to this pastor. He's been sent out. He's been brought up into the faith. He's been ramped up and amped up. He's got all the batteries charged. He's sent him out into the world. And it turns out, it's hard. Even for someone who believes it, who drinks the Kool-Aid, who is like, on it, it is hard. And so he writes to his mentor, and we don't ever get the, we don't get the first letter, we don't get the second one back, right? We don't know what it was really hard, but it turns out that the work of being an evangelist is a difficult thing to do in the world. Witness that most Christians won't talk to anyone else about their faith, they would rather talk to them about their personal life or some other remote detail of anything else in the world, but about faith, um, we don't do it. It's hard. And what we have here in this letter to Timothy is pretty much a summary of what it is to be an evangelist. Look at some of the things that are mentioned. If you want to be an evangelist, you got to remember that all scripture is inspired by God. You've got to go ahead and be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. You've got to convince or be encouraged. And with the utmost patience, teach everybody. Oh, we have to remember all this is real. And uh, the reason why it's good is because she's that man. Again, a lot of things people can throw the lot of with. Some people can't get past whether or not the virgin birth is a, is a myth, and that holds them up. There are lots of ways that we create myths for ourselves that make the truth easier to hear. Make the truth a little bit harder uh, to um, have to really deal with. And as a preacher, oftentimes, and I can speak for all of those who proclaim the gospel and preach sometimes the truth, uh, we sometimes like to take the hard edges off of Scripture to make it a little bit more powerful. Because sometimes the truth is indeed hard to hear. Or hard for us because it calls us out. It calls us to a new way of being. It calls us to a new life. And that means saying goodbye to our life. A life that may be very comfortable, a life that may be very easy, or easier. But what Paul is saying to Timothy is that this is the truth. And that you need to go preach the gospel when it's favorable, and especially when it's unfavorable. What he's also saying is that he recognizes that because sometimes this is a hard thing to hear, because sometimes the truth and what God wants us to do is exactly what we want to do, that we tend to wander. And we're pretty darn good at wandering, it turns out. Um, if everybody who said that they were a member of St. Martin's Field Episcopal Church showed up on Sunday, was not wandering someplace, we would have to imagine like each of them like Ella. We have 1,200 people in this room. He has a fire code that says 396. So we have a big problem on our hands because we're reading outside. We tend to wander. And we tend to wander because life is easier if we don't have to live into these things. And if we do have to live into these things. Even though living into the truth is sometimes, no, it's always going to make us better than who we are now. 
So I don't blame us for wandering. In fact, I don't blame us for wandering because in the, in the Bible, you can turn to almost any book of the Bible and find someone who's wandering. Let me just give you a couple of the, the greatest hits of wandering, John. First is Zacchaeus. In the song we have about him, we'll be in another tree. Zacchaeus was a Jew, and he was a tax collector. Now, what his job was, his job, his job is to fleece his own people for as much money as he possibly can get out of them, and then give that money to the people who have occupied their land and who are enslaving them. How popular is this guy? Wander away from the truth. But look what Jesus does. For section of the town, Zacchaeus climbs up in a tree. He's a little guy. He's up there. Jesus sees him and says, Zacchaeus! Everybody stops. Zacchaeus, come down out of that tree. Tonight, I'm not there in your house. And he does. And in that year, Zacchaeus says, You know, Lord, um, if I could throw out an end I'm going to repay them four times what I took. That's a new way of life right there. Your God is a fleece of people, and you're not going to fleece people anymore, and you're going to give back four times. Now it doesn't mean a God anymore, he's flat on <laughs> Brand new life. Hard truth. Take a look at my other favorite verse in the Bible, Peter. All right? Talk about something that wanders. My gosh. This is the same guy that got fish at night, and he's naked. He sees Jesus walking in the water and decides it's not the brightest. Put his clothes back on, and then jumped in the water. Off the boat. Woo! He's also the guy that wanders away pretty far. Jesus is about to die on the cross, and Jesus denies he even knows the guy one, two, three times. But look what Jesus does. Jesus sees him inside him and says, That one? <laughs> the one that's denied me three times, the one that doesn't take the picture, goes off the front of the water, goes on the front of the tank. That's the one I'm going to build my church on. That's the guy that's going to be the foundation stone for everything that's going to be in the church. Jesus can see inside of us and see the good inside of us and who we are, even when we wander far, far, far away. And then probably my favorite story in the gospel, I had a gospel, uh, is the story of the prodigal son. Right? That's amazing. I thought I was going to wander. He even says he wanders away. <laughs> Dad, take all the money, give me my inheritance, I'm done with you, I'm finished, I'm out, bye, thanks. Well, there's the money, I'm living, and this is living, and boom, and all the bad stuff. And it comes, finally, comes comes to the end of himself, wanders too far away, wanders away from himself. He comes back home with his tail between his legs, and his father from the front porch and sees him a mile away, shuts off the front porch and goes inside. And they throw a party for him because the son of the mother was lost, he's now found. Talk about a change of life. That's how they had to stone that child when he saw him a mile away, but see him, he jumps off the front porch and goes and runs to me. Put the arms around. The one who's lost is now found. So I think that is the good news for us who wander, the PSF, all of us, that even though we wander, even though we turn from the truth, as the Lord Timothy says, our salvation has been accomplished through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today we are going to baptize Olivia Susan. And we're going to make her the newest member of our body of Christ, the newest member of our family. And I'm going to guess that like us, she's going to wander some too. And we have an obligation, you see, my brothers and sisters, in baptism we are bound to one another. We have an obligation to one another. When we wander, someone will come out and find us and come gather us up and bring us back home. But when we're trying to come back home, we're sitting there with open arms. Now the arms crossed in, what are you doing here? I'm going to show you in heaven. In our baptism, we die with Christ, and we are raised in life in Christ. That meant if I have to work hard enough to get in heaven, no. Nope. We're going to baptize her, and she can get in heaven. No matter what she does. No matter how far she wanders, she will be a beloved saint. Welcome to heaven. That is amazing. And the real good news is that all of that leads to one thing. It's the hardest thing for us to get our minds around as Christians. It's God's grace. 
that God loves us so much and so freely that there is nothing that we can do that will separate us from the love of God. Oh. It means that when we are faithful to God's it means that God is there for us, loving us, no matter how far we wander, we cannot see the love of God in His grace. Now, the church does a darn good job, I think, with lots about it. One thing we tend to like to do, we think we pretty bad, we go out and we have to find some of those who wander, right? And look at, look at the, uh, let's see, one, go, go over your bulletins, please, look at page five. Read along with me. It's an important point. One, two, three, fourth line, fourth line down. Okay? So that everyone who belongs to God is a church may be proficient, equipped for every good work. What we are supposed to do through Scripture is to God, but through us in the place, to equip one another for good works. My brother and sister, that takes three things. It always has and always will. Neither is one of the last one. It takes our time, giving of ourselves, carving up time to make this happen so we can go find those who wander or we can ourselves be around. It takes our talents, those God given things that God has given to us and make us uniquely who we are, and especially crafted to go find and rub up with those who wander. Neither is one of the takes our treasure. The giving of money so that this place can do the work of God and Christ here in this community is from our heart. Why is the treasure the easiest one? Because all you got to do is write a check. If you do ACH, like you have to do well, my God, you have to write a check. It just comes right out of your account. The real word is the time and talent, but it does require the treasure to make this place happen. It just does. There's so much ministry we could be doing. There's so many ways we could help this community. And by God, if you look around us right now, our community is going to be a help all over the place. That we're not doing it because we don't have the people to show up and do it with other hands. We don't have the treasure made it possible to invest in it. But I know we've got the talent there. We're thinking about spiritual season today, and this is my attempt to kind of make the spiritual happen in the sermon. Let me tell you what. We need you to start to pray about how it is that you can give up yourselves. The wonderful things that you have as skills and gifts and talents, how can you use those to help find those who want her? How can you give money to help us enliven us, enrich us, to go out and do more of those things out of the Make the community whole again in the name of Christ. And most importantly, go out and find those who want their way. And do the work of the evangelist. And be patient and preach the gospel to them when it's not easy to do. The theme for our, our campaign this year is gratitude inspiring greatness. This is pledge chart. If you can't let me see the last note from anyone, or you can pick one up on the table in the back there. Grafting and inspiring greatness. So because we are grateful for all that God has given us, we will strive to be greater than we are. Because we will give of ourselves and the gifts we've been given, we, all of us, will be greater than we are together. I want to close with this. One of those gifts that we have in our church is a wonderful hymnal uh, filled with good songs and express things, sometimes more greatly than we can with words. So I want to close with one of my favorite hymns and one of the, the final verse of my favorite hymn, okay? So bear with me because I think it encapsulates all of this and makes it come true for us. <laughs> oh, to grace, how great a debt or daily crime constraint to be. Bless thy goodness, like a better, thine my wandering heart to thee. From good 